Welcome to my home. You mean my home. Okay, it's neither of our homes. But it is our podcast. Glitter and gay. Coming your way. So thanks for tuning in today. today. Wow. Okay. So I guess we just, we start. Have you done anything like this before? No, I have not done anything like this before. Have you? you You're my first, Tyler. Wow. Wow. You're my first time that I've like actually like co-hosted a podcast. I've guessed it on many podcasts. Yeah, I've guessed it. Of course you've guessed it. But you're Glenda Baker. I started to say, but I don't even think I've guessed it in person though. Oh, you haven't? I guess no, I did one. I did one in person and it was actually one of my favorites that I did. Really? Uh, it was with Barstool Sports randomly. Barstool Sports wanted this queen on their podcast. I can't even imagine what you discussed. Uh, we, it was actually, they have a random like gay podcast and it was a gay co-host and we talked about gay pop culture and you know, the same shit that we're going to talk about. This is going to be a big gay podcast <laughs> co-hosted you, by Glenda Baker. You remember I'm not gay though, right? I mean, <laughs> there's drag queen qualities to you for sure. <laughs> there are absolutely drag queen qualities to you. That's why I knew, listen. What did you say? We're biscuits and gravy. That's right. We go together. Are you talking about like my dominatrix pants? That's so, that's one that of the many of things. <laughs> your sparkly boots, your sweater with the stars all over it, your perfectly blown out hair, your gorgeous makeup. <laughs> I mean, what else? What else? What else? Um, so everybody, welcome to something very brand new that we haven't named yet. No, we haven't. No, no, but we've come up. All right. So yesterday, Glenda's visiting me right now, <laughs> and we're doing this whole season in in one weekend out That's here right. at my house in Zag Harbor. Yeah. And we've been talking about it for a minute, and we decided that we're going to let the name organically come out of this. Right. Right. So we're just going to, we're going to do these. I think by the time people are listening to this or watching it, However, you're experiencing it for the first time, it has a name, but you should know that in this moment, no name, no name. We've <laughs> no, got some suggestions. We, we have some suggestions. I would like to actually share suggestion number one right now. Go for it. I thought it was an amazing idea, but you need to like tee it up so they understand like the context of it. Exactly. And I also think that it could be thematic because I want it to be like funny because we're fucking funny. Of course. And I want it to be thematic with like the, the, the series that we put together. Right. So this main episode, we're going to talk about how Glinda and I met and what our first impressions are of each other. And a lot of like high level topics like that are basically what's going to guide the podcast. So today's episode is going to be our first impressions of each other. That was really the only thing that we had planned. Right. And so when we were driving out here yesterday, which is about typically a two hour drive, yesterday it was a three hour drive because of traffic. Right. Uh, we were sitting in the back of my car, Brandon was driving, yep. and we decided that we needed to put together 12 topics. Um, we decided that about two and a half hours into the drive. I went into the drive uh, with that being my intention the whole time, but I just, I, I am somebody who gets sidetracked. I am the queen of procrastination. And so, yes, we were 30 minutes away and I was like, oh, we're doing this tomorrow. I was like, we need to have our topics in line. Right. And so we stopped at a gas station to get a little snack. Yeah. <laughs> no gas was needed. <laughs> it was a potty break. <laughs> and, um, and then we were taking Brandon directly to the bus station. And so right. we had about 30 minutes to wrap it up. And I think we did great. We did amazing. I mean, I think that like the structure mm -hmm. of each episode and like kind of the subtitle of each episode. You know, you're saying this as you say structure. I was like, I'm supposed to be timing these episodes because one of the structures is we're going to have 30 minute episodes. I never started the damn timer. Well, it's okay because there's other people here. Mm -hmm. So somebody's going to tell us when we got to 30 minutes, surely. Uh, or or this episode might just be a little bit longer because it's the first episode. <laughs> or a little bit shorter. <laughs> <laughs> <Just to pick. laughs> but we are going to aim for 30 minute episodes. Right. We're going to finish every episode with a voicemail. Thank you, everybody who's been calling and leaving us voicemails. It's insane. I know, but we haven't heard any of them yet. We're I literally know. playing random voicemails. Right. We have no idea what they are, but I just can't believe that people like call and left questions. I know. I'm so excited. I know. I feel like a celebrity. My marketing director, Ryan, did listen to all of them and he picked, he did pick the top 12 okay. that he thought were going to be best for us. Okay. So they have been screened, but they're surprises to us. Okay. Well, thank God, because could you imagine some of the questions? 
questions that people might come up with. Mainly for you. I'm mainly <laughs> concerned about what people want to know about Glenn. I know what questions I would ask Glenda Baker. And I was like, if I asked that on a podcast, I was like, I don't think it would actually make the episode. They'd be like, why are you asking this sweet, southern, soulful <laughs> woman about <laughs> fill in the blank? <laughs> you know? I, I, what would you ask me? Oh, I'm going to ask you eventually. I mean, oh, the, the, okay. the questions are going to come You're up. You're going to ease me into it. <laughs> sure. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So let's get back to okay, sorry, the, uh, one of the potential names. Yes. So we bust out the 12 episodes. And I got to, I genuinely, I'm not just saying this, by the end of it, I was like, this might be the best podcast of all Ever. time. Yeah. I mean, it's uh, each topic is, I think we're very funny, but the reason I feel like I connect with you is because we also, we have life experiences, right? We've, we've been through shit. We've been through hell and back and we've had fun doing it. We have a sense of humor about it all, but like, I love following you on social media because you have great advice, but you're also hilarious and entertaining. And so like, I feel like I'm learning, I'm entertained, I'm inspired. And so like, I was like, this is the person I want to share this with. And when we got to the end of the 12, I was like, oh, these are solid topics yeah. like that anybody can relate to, not just real estate agents. Right. And so I look at Glenda and I was like, this is good. <laughs> I was like, this is really good. And what did you say? I said, from the gas station to the bus station, here we are. <laughs> and I said, that might be, the, uh, that might be the title of it. I think it's a great, I mean, think about it. We went from the gas station to the bus station. We came up with 12 episode topics and the subtitle of them. And they are solid as rock. They are. I'm. I'm. I'm excited about listening to this podcast back. Right. Because oh, yeah. of course, like we're a little heightened right now. I'm a little excited. I've never done anything like this, so it almost feels a little bit like an out of body experience. Really? For me, right now, it does. I might relax into it. I might be really bored by the fourth episode. I don't think so. I don't think so because I remember what the fourth episode is, girl. It's juice. <laughs> 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 it is juice. You know, I think. What I'm most excited about is that people kind of get to see behind the curtain. Yeah. That there's no pretense about it. There's no scripting about it. It's just two good friends. And I think that that kind of segues into like the first impression. Mm -hmm. Like who in the world would have thought our first connection, our first impression, our first meeting that we would be here, what, six years later? Five years I think later? it is about six years. Yeah, Five 2016. Six, yeah. yeah. So six years later that we were in Palm Desert. That was where when we first actually face-to-face -face met. Mm -hmm. We had spoken before that. Mm -hmm. But who would have thought six years later we'd be sitting at your house in the Hamptons? Like, not me. I mean, like, <laughs> I'm thinking to myself, like, like I sent, I sent somebody a message last night. I'm like, like, do you, like, get, like, I'm going to be at his house? In the Hamptons, like I'm staying there. Like I have my bedroom. Like nobody else has slept in my bed. Do you know what's crazy about that for me is in 2016, if somebody told me that I was going to have a house in the Hamptons, that was like mine to invite anybody to, <laughs> let alone Glinda Baker, <laughs> star of star of stage and screen. <laughs> I, I mean, I would have been like, okay, cute story. Um, I I actually remember my exact first impression of you. And I think what the reason I'm actually excited about this episode is I have no idea what your first impression of was me. I don't know. I, I, all right. I actually want you to go first. Really? I do. I want to I want to hear your story first. I'm very curious about it. Okay, so you know, we first met because you were looking for an agent in Atlanta. Mm -hmm. That was how we crossed paths. Mm -hmm. And um you posted it in our Facebook group. And I overnighted you Glenda Baker Brownies. Do you mm -hmm. remember that? Mm -hmm. And you picked up the phone and you called me and you're like, did you overnight me brownies? <laughs> and I was like, yes, how are you? And you're like, uh, you win. Like, I have a referral for Atlanta. I'm absolutely sending it to you. And I was so excited because I was like, oh, wow, there's this really hotshot real estate agent in New York. Wow. Because I'm thinking like, you're like this like fancy agent in New York and you're hip and young and he's going to like work with me. So I'm like, this is so cool. And then it was like maybe a month or two later that we were in Palm Desert. 
mm-hmm. and I was sitting at my table. So this is the bad thing about me is I don't really look up anybody. So I had no idea what you looked like. <laughs> Nothing. I mean, no clue. Zero. <laughs> okay. Nada. So you come up to me, you go, hi, I'm Tyler. I'm like, oh, my stars. Remember we were, I was at breakfast mm-hmm. alone. Mm-hmm. You were having breakfast with someone else. And I remember looking at you thinking, oh, my God, he looks like a model. Uh, okay, I keep going. I mean, <laughs> I love that story. Just, and you were just so polished, but you were much more quiet than I had expected. Mm. And I think you were younger than I expected. Mm-hmm. You looked younger. Mm-hmm. Um, I was like, wow. I was just so impressed at... Maybe the way that you carried yourself. I started to say your book of business, but I didn't really know that. I think it was more like the way you carried yourself that I was impressed by. This is a very, very interesting moment for me. And I think, so my first impression of you is the exact same story, but I'm excited for you to hear the other side of the coin and what's going on in my head. Because I think what's really fascinating, like I feel like what I've learned so much about selling real estate, interacting with other people is like this narrative that we all have in our head and like what's going on compared to the narrative in everybody else's head, right? Because this is all interacting at the same time. And I love, I actually got chills a little bit that that was your your first impression story of me because mine is the exact same story of my first impression of you, but with a totally different perspective. So the first time I actually knew who you were I went to the Tom Ferry Summit 2016. I think it's usually like late summer. So it's probably like August of 2016. I had been, that was the year of my weight loss journey. You know, so I was, I remember when I went there, I was still probably, I still had like my last 20 pounds to lose. Like, but that's how fresh I had been obese for, for 10, 15 years. And like, I was, I was a, I was a very scared person at the time. You know, I was just coming out of my shell. I had lost 200 pounds. I didn't know exactly how to exist in the world. And we'll talk about this other times, but like, you know, I had come out of basically out of isolation and was going to this huge real estate convention. I was completely out of my comfort zone. Nobody knew who I was. I hadn't been selling real estate for like five or six years. And I was, I I wasn't coaching yet. I was just attending as like an audience member. I didn't have a coach. And so I went there and I sat in the back and, you know, Tom does that thing. It was my first Tom Ferry experience, my first time ever seeing him in action and doing his thing, you know, and he's a, he's a great host. Right. Yeah, he, he's, that's like his, you know, he shines up there and he does that thing that now I realize is part of his thing that inspires people where he like calls out people in the audience and he's like, how many homes are you going to sell this year? So-and-so went from this to over this and like, you know, and it's like his like pitches. And I remember you were one of the people that he called out and as as like one of his success stories. And in my head, I was kind of just taking mental note of everybody that he called out. And then later, I think it was at that summit, I saw you on a panel and people were talking about um, how they run the revenue of their team and like basically what their profit margin should be. And I remember you and your coach, I think Debbie Holloway was actually leading it and you were hilarious. And I immediately was like, I love this woman. I was like, she's so interesting, but I could tell about the way you were talking about your business. I was like, oh, and I can also tell she runs like a big business. And you were talking about how you're spending way too much on gifts. You were like, I'm over investing in gifts. I love giving gifts. I love making people feel special, but it is a huge, I remember you were talking about it. You're like, I have to figure out a different way to do this because it's a huge chunk of my money is going towards gifting to people. And I was just like, oh, okay. I was like, I need to make a gifting program. So cut to, I didn't have a huge book of business. I was newly selling in the city and I had this client who I had sold them. It was at the time, maybe one of the biggest sales I had ever closed. And I'd sold them like, it was like a $4 million apartment in the city. She was relocating to Atlanta. We needed to sell that place. And she was like, I need a real estate agent in Atlanta. She and I had become very close. She trusted me. And I actually knew a couple of real estate agents down here, but that was a client that is very particular. You know, she is, she knows she is a boss. And I was like, I need to partner her with a boss. And I immediately thought of you 
and did not feel, I was like, oh, I was like, I'm going to call up this hot shot in Atlanta. I was like, and she's not going to want to do business with somebody like me. I was like, I'm, I'm just building my business. She'll be like, who are you? Because I put successful agents on a pedestal as like this thing. They're the pie in the sky. They're, they were basically celebrities to me. And I was like, I have this referral. So I actually posted it in the Tom Ferry Facebook page and you and like two other people, my phone started ringing off the hook. It was an important thing to me, but I was also busy that day and right. it, it was not my number one priority list. And so I didn't call any of y'all back that day. And I was like going around doing whatever work I needed to do. And the next day I got in and I had this batch of brownies <laughs> on my desk. And I was like, I was like, who sent me brownies? I was like, I'm trying to finish my weight loss journey. <laughs> and, and I opened it up and it's like, oh my stars. And it's got all your glitter and your face. And it's wrapped up in like these blue ribbons and these amazing brownies. And we eat them. And so I immediately call you and I was like, you win. And then we have a conversation. And while you're quirky and fun and over the top, I was asking you, she had a list of questions she wanted me to get answered. And like, you knew them instantly like you and i was like oh this is the kind of person she wants to work with somebody who doesn't have to go google it like she just knows what she's talking about and so then when we met face to face i was still in that earlier because then you know that the client ended up kind of going sideways she is who she is i love her but you know and so then i was double embarrassed because i felt like i had sent you a referral that didn't work out and i was like almost like ashamed of it so i remember when i came to meet you in person I was like, let me go introduce myself. I was like, we've had, she sent me those brownies. I almost felt like I owed you an apology. And, and Get so out. I, yes. And so I came over nervous, like tail between my legs and was like, hi. I was like, I'm Tyler. And, and you were like, oh my stars. Hi. And then. And, and, Do you sound like that? <laughs> no, I'm just bad at impressions. I was trying to say very bad. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I know you actually have like this beautiful, like deepness to your, to your Southern act. There's like a, I really like it. There's something, it feels like I'm getting like a hug before sleep, the way Thank you talk. You. And there's something like very warm and enveloping around it. You have a great voice. And I voice. hugged you when we were there. Oh, you're a big hugger. Of I course. Am a big your, your hashtag is feel my hugs. Exactly. <laughs> FMH. Some people think it means something else. <laughs> I always think, fuck my something. <laughs> Art. <laughs> okay. So, I mean, that's like crazy. And, you know, since then, obviously, our lives and our business have changed so much. Can you believe it? So much. I mean, it's crazy. So, now, how many, tell us a little bit about like your TikTok history. Uh, can you believe the TikTok thing? The TikTok thing is crazy. So everybody knows who you are now because your TikTok has exploded. And I mean, can you imagine where we were in 2016 when we met our first impressions of each other? We were just people, real estate agents trying to build our business, yeah. you know, just taking a few risks, yeah. trying to sell some houses, trying to make some money, live the dream. And then... Tell, tell me, tell me a little bit about this TikTok moment. Well, it's been about sixteen months, mm -hmm. and since I decided to do it, and I'm like, I mean, I look back on it, and I, I can't believe it. I can't believe the explosion. I can't believe the, the recognition. Mm -hmm. And everybody wants to talk about it. Buyers, sellers, agents, everybody wants to talk about it. But I think that that what was so crazy to me about it was never, ever, ever in a million years did I think that that was going to happen. Right. Like, totally. I didn't have that vision. I was just thinking like, oh, I'll more people will watch my videos <laughs> and hopefully somebody will buy a house. Yeah. And now... I look back on it and just like the impact that I've been able to have, it's, it's not just about real estate. Mm -hmm. And I think that of the things that I think about with it, it's not just real estate. Well, you're also being pretty humble right now. How many, what's your, isn't it, how many millions of views do you have at this point? A little over a hundred million. A hundred million views. A hundred and fifty-seven thousand views a day. 
across my video catalog. That's insane. That's insane. It it is absolute. I I I just I can't articulate like what it's done, mm-hmm. what it's done for my business, what it's done for me personally, mentally, um, and how it's touched other people. Totally. To me, I mean, whether it's about my drinking, mm-hmm. whether it's about people being inspired to be a real estate agent, mm-hmm. whether it's about people that want the Glenda of Nashville or the Glenda of Denver, where that are picking up the phone and saying, hey, I want to buy a house in Denver. Can you help me? Mm-hmm. So it's, it's so cool. It's so cool. But who would think that some 55-year-old real estate agent in Atlanta, Georgia, would be TikTok famous? <laughs> I just want to go live in Hype House. <laughs> <laughs> so I was at, this was back when I was still drinking. I was at a, um, my favorite bar in the city, Pocket Bar. And that was that was my watering hole. I was there every night. It's literally the bar where everybody knows your name. Teeny tiny. People get drunk. We all talk to each other. And I had just started posting my videos. And I had like one season of Whitman Wisdom out. And uh, I was not a million dollar listing yet. This was uh, a year or two before that. And a guy came over to me. And he was like, and at this point, I had no following. You know, my average view on a video was a couple hundred two or three comments, you know, very light engagement, but I was having fun. I was just enjoying it. And this guy came over to me and he was like, you're the guy, he's like, you post like real estate little how-to videos, right? And I remember I felt so special because I was like, somebody, somebody watches my videos. And he said, he works for a marketing company and their team was doing a presentation that day. And he's like, somebody on my team used you as an example in our presentation of uh, of being a subject matter expert marketing. And he called it SME marketing. I don't know if he made it up, but it was subject matter expert. And he said, the interesting thing and what we're learning is it doesn't matter what you say in your videos. He's like, because what you're doing is like brainwashing every single person who comes across who you are, what you do, and why they should work with you. And he was like, they're not walking away with what their credit score needs to be you know, what they need to think of in an inspection, what, you know, what kind of down payment they need to have. All they're walking away with is that guy's funny and he's a real estate expert. And I was like, that's all I need. I was like, that's all I need. I was like, I actually don't want you to retain it because I want you to call me and ask me these questions. Right. But if I hadn't, and I remember that was why I kept doing it. Because I was like, these are kind of expensive. It's hard for me to like really see what the ROI is at that point. And if I knew what these videos would eventually do for my life and like where things would lead. It's what makes me so excited about this and what we're doing right now. Right. Because like we're sitting here in my living room and who knows what this is going to become. You know what? I, I think that I don't think that either one of us realize the potential that this fireside chat has. Oh, for sure. Because yeah, I mean, we're both hilarious. Mm-hmm. But I think the transparency that people will see will change somebody's life. Totally. I here's I think you and I can agree to this pact. We were talking offline. We've actually been trying not to talk at all right. <laughs> for these last two days. And it I has was, been terrible. It has been. Oh my god. I mean, like every single time we start having a good conversation, we're like, nope. <laughs> nope. Save it for the podcast. <laughs> I was like, we just need to talk about this on, right. on camera. But we've both kind of agreed there's almost nothing that's that's, you know, off limits. Yeah. Uh and if so, <laughs> I guess you'll hear about it on because <laughs> we didn't set any parameters. No, we didn't. I mean, but that I think that that's the thing. I think yeah. I think and I think that's what makes us, gives that, that chemistry. Mm-hmm. Um, number one, I think that there's such a caring and protective nature mm-hmm. from both of us to each of us. Oh, for sure. So I feel 100% um, secure being with you. I know that you wouldn't do anything to hurt or damage me. And you know the same thing. And so when you say that there's nothing off limits, like, like we're friends. I never have to worry about you doing anything that would, would put me in a bad light. 
and it's funny because last night when we were talking and I said to you, promise me no judgment because I haven't told anybody this. Oh, yeah. And I was thinking to myself, what is that X factor about Tyler that gives me the freedom to reveal my most intimate secrets? I mean, think about that quality that you have. Mm. I mean, it's like the X factor. Thank you. Thank you. You know, I feel like, and I I haven't always felt this way. This is a, something I've learned over the last few years, especially through the experience of Million Dollar Listing and sharing a lot of my, you know, I'm surrounded by the top real estate agents on the planet. And they're really following, you know, me as an up and coming real estate agent and building my business and not at the level they are. And I was so worried about sharing that. And I ended up realizing that the things that like I'm most embarrassed about, the things I'm most ashamed of, the things that I'm trying to change and trying to work on are the things that people relate to most. Right. And it's created like this comfort for me to be like, okay, I was like, triumphs, we're going to talk about triumphs. Yeah. But we're, all, we're I mean, we're going to talk about the things that we thought were like the dark moments, the not so greatness. And, uh, and that's, to me, that's what inspires this podcast. We have right. a sense of humor about the bullshit. That said, no, we have not. I, yeah, honey, You're I think lying. Uh, no, I'm not. And we need to have, so I'm looking down at a timer right now. We're doing this old fashioned. I don't know how most people do it to time themselves, <laughs> but I'm looking literally down at a stopwatch. When I started it, we're now at officially 23 minutes, which means we're probably at like 28 minutes. <laughs> I need a safe word because I don't want to just be like, the, the, I'm looking at the timer. I'm just going to say <laughs> pineapple. <laughs> <laughs> when I say, I'm going to start saying pineapple around 20 minutes. That means we've got five minutes to kind of like wrap up that conversation. And then we're going to play our first voicemail right now. You do know that pineapple is like the universal signal for like swingers. That's why I picked it. Okay. Yeah. I'm just making sure. <laughs> you do know that I run the Universal Swingers Club <laughs> of the Hamptons. It's a it's a huge it's a huge ring out here. All right. So I'm playing our very first voicemail. Okay. We told people to call in, leave voicemails. They could ask a question. They could tell us something they're going through, something they want advice on. Okay. And that's it. So when they call, is it your voice? No, it's actually Ryan's voice. It's like have a question for Tyler and Glinda. Oh, <laughs> leave wow. it leave it here. We'll play it on the pod. I love it. Yeah. So here comes our first one. All right. Hold on. There we go. Tyler and Glenda, I just wanted to know how both of you are so good at being famous, but also keeping your ego in check and just being so humble. I feel like you're both so genuine and I have such a hard time when I feel like everybody's eyes are on me and I'm trying to kind of bring really, really big energy, but also trying to be humble at the same time. Um, I'm a secret message leaver, so you can just guess who this is. Tyler, you probably know who it is. Anyway, I love both of you, and I'm so excited to hear your answer. Okay, I know exactly who that was. I know who it is, too. <laughs> I cannot believe she left us a message. Well, I know she would leave, would leave you a message. She left us a message. I can't believe she even knows who I am. All right, well, that's that's my castmate from Million Dollar Listing, Kirsten Jordan, oh. the first female cast member on yeah. the the New York cast. Uh, she asked me to be on her po on her show. Oh, that's, I actually watched that. Yeah. yeah. So, firstly, I love KJ. Oh, so um, nice. and she She's and little teeny tiny, <laughs> teeny tiny. She and I have a uh, very much of like a sibling bond because mm -hmm. when I joined the show. You know, Frederick and Ryan had been on it for over 10 years at that point. Steve had been on it for like six years. And then I was brand new and hadn't, I didn't have a personal relationship with either of them. So I didn't really get that. Holy shit, this is happening. We're on TV. This is what, you know, I didn't have a person I could call until she joined the show. And I was still in, because she joined the season after me. And so I was still in that newness phase. And it was just so great to have somebody I could like latch on to. And, I want to hear yours on, you know, like you have hundreds of millions of people who have viewed you now. This is like a brand new thing that you're going through in the moment. I'm a, I'm a few years into my public eye thing, but what, uh, what, how are you coping with the fact of like, 
hundreds of millions of people are watching me and I'm still a person, right? With my own values. You know, I I have to tell you, like, I'm at the World Series and this guy comes up to me and he goes, you're on TikTok. I'm like, I am on TikTok. I knew it. I saw Blonde with Stars on. I knew it had to be Glenda Baker. Will you take your picture with me? And I'm just like, seriously? Mm-hmm. He goes, I'm not going to buy or sell real estate. He goes, but I love listening to you. And so it was a little bit strange for me because mm-hmm. I'm not on a show. Mm-hmm. I mean, I'm just a real estate agent. I think for me, I don't even really... I don't even really notice it. Like when agents come up to me, when buyers and sellers come up to me, when people come up to me, I'm just so flattered and so honored that you would take your time, your most precious commodity in life, your time, and listen to me to educate you, entertain you, inspire you. It's an honor that I take so seriously. So I just want to be very careful with my words. I always want to remember this very moment of my life Mm -hmm. where, like, somebody thought that I was special. Mm -hmm. So for me, I I always remember, like, just, I just remember that this moment is so fleeting. Mm -hmm. And so, and for them, it was a big deal to take a picture with me. So I want to be so gracious and I want to be so loving because I'm so honored. Yeah. I feel I have a very similar thing that keeps me in check, you know, because like I, I grew up dying to fit in, you know, I, I desperately wanted to fit in. I was the overweight gay kid in the South, loved musical theater, you know, was not, was not the athlete, was not, you know, I, I just never fit in. And then in real estate, I always felt the same way. And it wasn't until I got, the, the show was kind of like that stamp of validation of like your uniqueness is special. And it's one of the things like when I look back on my life that I'm really grateful for is like all of those struggles, even though, I mean, it felt like torture in the middle of it is that like, I, I am constantly like looking back to like the little kid me and being like, you did it, yeah. you know, like you did it. And you, you wanted this so bad. Do not take it for granted. And when people stop me and ask me for pictures, I, I literally cry and walk away. Cause I'm just like, is this, is this my life? You know, it's just like, it doesn't, it, it doesn't feel real. And it, yeah. but it feels at the same time, it feels so good. And then, and I never want to be the person who takes it for granted. And I know so many people who take it for granted and uh, you know, and I'm just like, a, I don't, I don't know what's next, right? Like right. every every year the the season ends, we don't find out for a long time if we're coming back, and the show might come back, but I might not. And like you know, so who knows, right? Like these are things that I just have to cherish because it could be a slice of my life, it could be the entirety of my life, but it's so cool. I mean, it's just I'll never not think this is the coolest thing ever that you know that I'm getting to share my work and my life, and like people are connecting to that, like. And not only does it not grow my ego, it actually keeps me humble. Oh yeah. I mean, it actually keeps me like, wow, like, like the work you're doing is, is good for, is good for your colleagues. It's good for the people. And like, that's awesome. And you know what else is awesome? Is that KJ called in and left us a voicemail. That was our first voicemail. I know. That's so cool. That's so cool. I, I, this is also our first episode. So think about it. The last kid picked on the playground. Mm-hmm. The kid dying to fit in. Mm-hmm. And look at us now. <laughs> Sitting here together. Well, at least we found each other. <laughs> in the Hamptons. That's true. And a house I just bought in the Hamptons. There might not be any furniture in here. <laughs> We've got a place to sit. <laughs> we sure do. And we Turn the fireplace fabulous. on. Fabulous. Girl, you look, I can't get over these pants. Are they fabulous or what? I bought them on Amazon. Honey, the episode's over. Okay, sorry. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> <laughs>